Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to yet another video here on the channel. Now, before you guys go out and complain and ask me where the fuck I've been these past couple of weeks, I know this video was supposed to come out much earlier than now, but unfortunately, a lot of my content got delayed because we had Hurricane Ian a couple weeks ago cause a lot of damage and chaos all across the state, especially down in the West Coast. God, I wish I wasn't those people right now. Prayers go out to anybody else who was greatly affected the most by Hurricane Ian. I also suffered damage from that bastard too, but that is another topic for another day. So anyway, lots has happened since I was gone. And I mean, lots has happened. We obviously got a shit ton of updates coming from the war on Ukraine and a ton of developments that were made last month and even this month. Now, since the last time I've made an update video on the Ukraine war, the Ukrainians have been making so much significant gain, especially what we saw last month and what we are currently seeing this month. Now, after, I believe, seven months under Russian occupation, Ukrainian forces were able to set up a counter-offensive that was proven effective last month, that they were able to reclaim the city of Kharkiv, even fully liberating the entire province itself pushing Russian forces back even further within the eastern portions of the country. And just recently, Russia has just abandoned a strategic city known as Liman, located in eastern Ukraine, after this fear of encirclement by the Ukrainians in this very highly effective counteroffensive that proved too much for Russia's military to risk, which is why they were forced out of Kharkiv to begin with. Now, for anybody who does not know, Liman, along with Kharkiv, are cities located within a specific region that makes up the eastern portion of Ukraine around the Donetsk River, known as the Donbass region. This is the region that the Russians are the most interested in, and the region that has seen the most activity of this war. Liman fell back into Ukrainian hands and was fully liberated in only just a single day right after Russia annexed four Ukrainian republics that make up the Donbass region, including Donetsk, which is where Liman is located. Of course, in the start of this month, Russia announced that four of these republics belonging to Ukraine, which are, again, as mentioned earlier, Donetsk, as well as Luhansk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson, have all been annexed by the Russians due to overwhelming, almost unanimous support to join the Russian Federation. Obviously, the referendums that were held in those four republics had a ton of question marks surrounding them. I mean, we've heard some reports that people, particularly Ukrainians that remained in those regions, were forced at gunpoint by guards with AK-47s just to vote on these referendums and were forced to vote in favor of joining Russia. Now, because of this, the referendum saw 100% turnout and every single referendum in those four republics had 100% support in joining Russia. Now, Russia has been using the city of Liman mostly as like a transport and logistics hub for northern operations in the Donetsk Republic, and the capture of Liman by the Ukrainian forces is considered to be one of the largest Ukrainian victories since their advances in the Kharkiv Republic last month. And I'm noticing a lot of Ukrainians are seeing this as a blip in the radar, a rational and a very sensible and wise next step forward to taking back more captured territory and fully liberating their country. Now, Ukraine's counteroffensive has been proven to work, pushing the Russians back further into the Donbass region, further east. However, I think it is not going to be very easy for them to fully and entirely liberate the entire country. Of course, there are portions of Donetsk and Luhansk, as well as the entirety of the Crimean Peninsula, that are almost entirely Russian. They see themselves as ethnically Russian, they speak Russian, it's the majority there, and Russia is obviously not fighting this alone there. There are different factions in Donetsk and Luhansk that see themselves already as independent, and there's even been supposed talks that Belarus might be throwing their hat in the ring as well, although unconfirmed. There are reports going out saying that Russia now controls less lands than it did in the initial days of the war back in February. Russian forces have completely and fully withdrawn from the northern borders of Ukraine. They withdrew from the Chernobyl exclusion zone that they've held for at least a month. There was a lot of like back and forth fighting that was going on in the capital city of Kiev, and Russian forces have completely left Kiev. 
They've withdrawn from the city since mid to late spring, if I remember correctly. They also attempted to capture Odessa and Lvov, but they've ultimately failed at that goal. Now they are ultimately and are almost exclusively contained to the eastern and southeastern sides of the nation, which is, of course, the Donbass region, the region that the Russians are the most interested in taking, and is also seeing a lot of slow advancements of Ukrainian forces. Again, as mentioned earlier, they retook not just the city of Kharkiv, but the entire province or republic or oblast itself. So recently, Putin himself has been calling for peace negotiations between the Russians and the Ukrainians to bring a swift conclusion to this already problematic war. Which, of course, to no fucking surprise, Ukrainians forcefully and completely rejected. And Putin in recent days, and I know this is gonna sound a bit terrifying, so don't freak out, but Putin has been making hints as of recently that he is willing to use tactical nukes in the war. Now, I'll talk about my thoughts on this in a future video. This was actually suggested by the leader of the Chechen Republic, uh, Razmin Katarov, in response to Ukrainian forces capturing Liman and other settlements in the Donbass region. I don't think Putin is crazy enough to use tactical nukes, especially if it affects his own so-called newly gained Russian territories that he just supposedly claimed in rigged referendums. I will go in depth into this in a future video, so hang tight. Now, Liman is not the only city that has just been liberated by Ukrainian forces. Ukraine has continued to make more and more extraordinary gains in utilizing the same surprising counteroffensive methods that have helped regain control of Kharkiv, overwhelming Russian forces in the south and eastern regions of the nation that they've occupied since the start of the war. Ukrainian forces since the capture of Liman, they have continued to push further and further and have captured multiple settlements much deeper into the Donbass region, including Borova, Stavki, and most recently, the village of Grekivka, located in Luhansk, has just been liberated by Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, down south, defensive lines northeast of the city of Kherson have completely collapsed at their entirety for the Russians, allowing Ukrainians to push back really hard against what was considered amongst Russia's best fighting forces in their military arsenal. Russian officials have also released the director of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant shortly after kidnapping him and illegally detaining him. This is probably just an effort by the Russians to sabotage and fuck over Ukraine's control over the nuclear power plant. Right now, the situation going on in Zaporizhia is a little bit on and off, especially regarding the nuclear power plant that is there. The Russians, however, are still not giving up on Ukraine, even though they have been facing a lot of harsh pushback by Ukrainian forces. Russian officials and forces have also doubled down on the decision to invade, annex, and occupy multiple other provinces of Ukraine outside of the four eastern republics that make up the Donbass region of Ukraine. Now, we're already seeing this kind of unfold just a little bit. There was just this big airstrike that just happened in Kiev. Even though Russian forces have completely withdrawn from Kiev, I really don't think it would surprise anyone if they attempted to invade again. There's also been airstrikes and raids going on in Lviv and Odessa. There was also this bridge that connected Crimea to the Russian mainland that was just blown up. And of course, a couple weeks ago, the Nord Stream pipeline blew up. Although we really don't know who really did that. I'm going to talk more about it in a separate video coming in the near future. Nord Stream and the Crimea bridge will both be talked about in a future video coming soon. So, in conclusion, the war is continuing to go very poorly for the Russians. The Russians are being completely overwhelmed by the Ukrainians. They have completely underestimated the pushback that the Ukrainians are inflicting on them. Things are really not looking too great for Russia at this moment. From just this war alone, they are suffering from high casualties, lack of training and experience, low war morale, a lot of Russian citizens who are protesting against the war, a lot of the anti-war protesters are being detained and arrested by Russian forces. A lot of Russians are even starting to flee the country in an effort to avoid mandatory conscription to fight in Ukraine. Russia's underestimation of Ukraine's strength and the counteroffensive tactics that they have been pulling, that's sort of like the main topic of today's video. We've talked extensively about it. Mismanagement and shortcomings from higher ranking officials and a combination of the United States the UK, the EU, and the rest of NATO are also sending everything that they've got 
straight to Ukraine in an effort to help them. Even though, judging by the outcome of this war, they are already proving to themselves and the world that all in all they're doing just fine. And of course by the international sanctions that were put in place and also increased as the United States right after the annexation of those eastern republics, increased sanctions and already implemented new sanctions in response to again, Russia annexing more Ukrainian territory. Now if I do remember correctly, I think there are some Russian allies that aren't even recognizing the newly annexed Ukrainian territories. With the exception of Belarus, obviously, I think, if I remember correctly, that Belarus is the only country that recognizes the newly annexed territories. But I'm hearing that China is actually refusing to recognize the newly annexed territories. So, that is where we are with the Ukraine war. Of course, I will keep you up to date with any new information that comes out involving the war in Ukraine. I'll try my best to make sure I keep you guys up to date as much as possible with the Ukraine war, with the election that is going on here in the US. So if any of you guys are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. And make sure the notification bell is set to all and not partial. So that way you don't miss a new upload when it actually happens. I'm your news guy, so I'll be sure to keep you guys as up to date as possible with everything that is obviously going on in the world. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little notification bell. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias, links are in the description below. And make sure you share this video around with your friends, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever. I'll also keep you guys up to date on all my social medias, especially on Twitter. So don't forget to follow me there because I post news and retweet news there as well. And of course, I also have exclusive content that is found on several other video hosting sites that I use, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, follow me there. There is exclusive content that is to be found there, so don't miss out on that. But anyway guys, like, subscribe, ring notifications, and until then, take care, talk soon, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.